How's it going everyone? I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So if you're new to programming or new to JavaScript, I think building out smaller components is a great way to learn JavaScript and how to manipulate the DOM and just do simple stuff. So in this video, it's kind of important to know how to build something like a dropdown. And I'm going to show you how to do that with just a little bit of JavaScript and a little bit of HTML. And then of course some styling to kind of give it that animation look. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, I definitely recommend you stick around and learn a few things. All right, so of course, the first thing you probably want to do is make an index file, right? And I have a web server already kind of hosting this out. So let's make an index file. And then let's also, you know, verify it's working. So I'll say drop down, make sure stuff actually shows up. All right, and then secondly, we want some type of JavaScript uh, source. So I'll say, um, we'll say call it script.js. And we can go ahead and import that in our index file here. So before the ending tag of the body, I'm going to say script uh, source is equal to script of JS. And then finally, we probably want to import some styling. So I'm going to say style.css, go back to the index file, and then I can say link of CSS to bring in that. So the first steps of building like a drop down button is you probably want some type of wrapper. So I'm going to make a div and call it, I don't know, drop down. And inside of that drop down, we can make a button that says, uh, I don't know, uh, actions, I guess. And there you have it. You have some actions here. And when you click it, it doesn't do anything. But the main idea is we want to have some type of hidden DOM element underneath the actions button that you can kind of hide and show. So inside of this drop down class, let's make another div. We can give it a class of drop down. And I'm going to use BEM here. So I'm going to say drop down underscore menu. And then we could just put some links here. So I'll just do like, I don't know, save, edit, and delete. All right, so that will make some links show up. But notice the issue is, is that they're all like in the same line horizontally. One way you can kind of fix this is we could do some styling. So let's just go ahead and target the drop down menu. So I will say class inside the style sheet, I say drop down menu. Um, but what we actually want to do is we want to style those A tags and make them be horizontal. So one way you can do it is just give it a display a block. At least I thought that's how you do it. Yep, okay, so make sure you have your Chrome debugger open and your cache disabled so that when you refresh the page, you can actually see your changes. So let's just kind of, um, I don't know what you guys wanna focus on next. Let's try to actually add some spacing and make this drop-down menu look a little bit better. So I'm gonna style the drop-down menu. So I'll make a new class here. And we can give this like a border of one pixel solid and we'll make it like, I guess like a light gray. See if that'll show up. Oh, I have two periods, so make sure you don't do that. All right, and then secondly, you see how this is like full width of the screen. We don't want that. We want to give it like an actual fixed width of, let's say 200 pixels for now and see how that looks. All right, that's a little bit too big. I'll try 120. All right, so we have some basic styling. It doesn't look that great. Um, let's move on to the button. Let's give this another BIM class of like drop down uh, button so we can kind of style that. So going here, let's style the drop down button. And I'm going to give it like a background color of some type of blue. I'll just give it blue for right now and see what happens. Uh, that's way too, that's way too, you know, let's just steal a colors. So I'm going to go to coolers. I think that's a cool site you can grab some colors from. And you can some, generate some colors here. Okay, why are there so many pop-ups just to get a button? So as I press the space bar, it's going to kind of generate different buttons. This one looks pretty good. Uh, I know I did blue in the beginning of this, but whatever. Try this. Green, that's cool. Let's do a color of white. Okay, maybe we should keep it the black. Anyway, so we got a drop-down button. Let's get rid of the border. So border none. And then we can also like add some padding to it and probably give it some width as well, so 120 pixels. Does that look like a button? I don't know if that even looks like a button. Might be too much padding. So I'm gonna reduce the padding a little bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and round the border, so border radius of 10 pixels and see how that looks. That looks okay, cursor is a pointer. All right, so as you can tell, I, don't, I didn't really memorize the styles or anything, I'm just trying to play around with it, but all right, the main purpose of what we're trying to do is how do you make that drop down menu kind of hide and show, right? So if I go back to my index file, we have drop down menu here. 
and we probably want to add a class hide to it just so that when the page loads it's hidden and inside of this we could probably add a helper utility class called hide and just say display of none so now when the page loads it's the drop down has gone right so at this point you kind of have to ask yourself okay how do i make this so that when the user clicks on it it removes that hidden class from my dom element over here so what we can do is Find the class for what we want to add an event listener to. So drop down button, go to our script tag, and I can first grab that DOM element. So I can say const uh, drop down button, I guess, is document.query selector and grab the class of drop down button. And then we can add like an event listener to it. So I can say drop down button add event listener. If someone clicks it, we are going to call a function, right? And the function, what it needs to do is it needs to basically grab the drop down menu and remove the hide. So get drop down menu, remove hide class. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the drop down menu here just to kind of save some computation, but it doesn't really matter where you put it because we're just grabbing one element. So it's not going to take too much work. So drop down menu. Make sure I do the tuple underscores. Let me make sure I did that right. Drop down menu, drop down. Yeah, make sure I do double underscores. Now, let me just look this up. BEM, make sure I'm doing this right so you guys don't make fun of me. Sometimes people online can be brutal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should just block two underscores in element. And then you can do like a modifier with the hyphen hyphen. So I think I'm doing it right. Let's go back. And I'm kind of jumping all over the place. So I hope that doesn't confuse you. But again, we are trying to grab, let me make sure you can see this code here. We are trying to grab the drop down menu and we want to remove the class from it. So one way you can do that in JavaScript, I can say class list dot remove and I can say remove hide. Okay, so this, let me see if this works. And that does, you see that it showed up. And now we have an issue where if you keep clicking the button, at some point you should make it go away, right? You should hide it again. So instead of saying remove hide, I can say toggle hide, which is a cool little helper. And you can see that it's kind of opening and closing. Now, what do y'all want to work on next? I think in the example I showed you before, there was like a carrot here. So what you can do is you can go to CDN JS and you want to get font awesome. Okay, so let's go to font awesome. And we're going to click on this link, go to our index file, and I'm going to bring it in. So I could just type link CSS and bring in font awesome here. And now we should have the ability to kind of style that button with an icon. So it's really easy to start using font awesome icons. You just basically, you can do like an I tag and give it a class of FA for font awesome. And then the, what you want. So I can say FA caret right, I think it is. Let's see if that works. Yep. So there you have it. You have a little button with a little arrow. The arrow could probably be positioned a little bit better. And while I'm in here, let's just go ahead and give this a font family of sans serif, just in case. All right, so now you have a drop down that's toggling and hiding and showing. So we could just do some more styling here. So what I could do is just add some padding to the left of the buttons. Um, so I could say like padding. And then for top and bottom, we'll do four pixels, then left and right, we'll say 10 pixels and see how that looks. Looks pretty good. I am gonna actually remove the hide class here just for right now that we can just make more progress styling it. And as a side note, I mean, definitely enable live reload when you're doing stuff like this. So I don't have to keep going over here and refreshing the page. Uh, I just, I'm too lazy to set it up. All right, so this looks pretty good. I am zoomed in a lot. So that's why it looks so wonky. But I'm zoomed in so you guys can see it if you're watching on your like cell phone or something. So yeah, we could just make the font size a little bit smaller because I think the buttons, okay, that's too big. Let's do 16 looks pretty good um let's get rid of the underline so i can say text decoration of none and then we can say color of like a gray okay and then as we hover over the rows we could probably add like a hover event so i'll say when we hover over a link we can change the background to let's just try ee -E and see how that looks cool so that looks uh pretty good at least I think so. You may not think so, but... Alright, so one thing you'll notice is that as you're clicking on the links, 
you would think that the drop down should kind of go away, right? So we kind of need to add yet another event listener, I believe, to the links if you click them. Or what you could do is basically add an event listener to the window. And if you ever click off of the button, you could just hide the drop down. So let's try doing that. I could say window dot add event listener. If you click on anywhere in the window, we could simply um, hide by simply adding the hide function here. Let's see if this works. So now we have an issue where I think it's working, but as you click the button, it's going to fire this and then um, do this. So one quick fix you could do, I think you could like, let me make sure I'm doing this right. I think it's e.target to figure out what you've actually clicked. And hopefully my head's not hiding that, but I'll bring it up. So if you click it, notice that it prints out the actual button that we clicked on. Well, not necessarily. If you click on the carrot, it's going to print out the carrot. But there's probably some workarounds to not make it hide unless you've clicked on the button. So I can say if e.target was equal to the drop down button, then we don't want to hide it. Okay, so let's, let's try that. Or maybe I have it backwards. There we go. So if the target is not equal to the button, that's when we need to hide the menu. So if you click on this, uh, the only issue with this is I think if I click on the carrot, it's not going to do what it needs to do. So I don't know if I need to add like yet another listener or maybe there's a, a better way to do that. Um, if anyone knows, let me know. I mean, I'm sure there's a, a faster way to like check the parent. If they have a, a common ancestor, then we probably don't want to uh, hide it. But anyway, that's good enough. This is just a learning experience for you all if you wanted to learn a little bit more about drop downs. All right, so let's actually change the hrefs to go to something. So I'm going to say like pound save, pound edit, pound delete, and verify that when I click on them, it actually changes the URL. So that's cool. That's working. Um, let me lowercase these. That look pretty good. Nah, they look better uppercase. As you can tell, I did not do any practice really for this little tutorial. Uh, one thing I wanted to change though is what did I want to change? All right, so for the last thing I want to show you all is how do I actually make the like drop down slide out and slide back in? So one way you could do it is by doing transitions. So I guess I like transition all of 0 0.5 seconds. And that'll basically allow any CSS that's changing to slowly transition to the new value. And then down here for hide, you know how we're like adding the hide class and removing it from the button. We could simply just make the probably the max height be zero here. And maybe opacity could be like zero as well. Let's see if this actually does anything. I think it's kind of working, but not exactly how we want it. I'm going to make it go a little bit faster. So I'm going to say like 0.25. And then I'm also going to, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's sliding that well. So let's try if we can do like position of absolute to this. And see what happens. Uh, maybe we also need to say like a max height of 100 pixels. You know, it's really hard to tell with the opacity, so let's just get rid of the opacity here. So it definitely is sliding. You can see that sliding in and out. But I think I need to say like overflow of hidden so that it actually hides the stuff. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's one way to do it. I'm going to add back the opacity here again, just because it makes it look a little nicer. Now, Again, this isn't like the most elegant code. If you wanted to like put multiple drop downs on the same page, like this is not going to work. This is probably going to break. Like you see here, the second one doesn't work. So there's probably gonna have to be like a lot of work to get this working. But the main takeaway was just kind of like learn how do you use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM to do something like this. And then I'm also hoping that you learned a little bit about styling and like how to make something transition out and whatnot. So yeah. This tutorial was very uh, ad hoc and all over the place, but I hope you guys learned a little bit of something from it. If you enjoyed watching this, be sure to give me a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to be hosting random videos like this in the future that you can learn a lot about web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript fun. And then, uh, yeah, leave me a comment if you have a particular component or widget that you want to see me build. I like to do these like live coding tutorials, not um, which is why I'm kind of jumping all, all over the place. But yeah, let me know. All right, thank you so much for watching all and have a great day. Happy coding.